Hello guys, uh, in this video we will be talking about the gluconeogenesis, a very interesting and in energy consuming process to generate glucose from pyruvate as we have seen in this picture. Now one thing I must tell you uh, about all these metabolic processes is metabolism is all about linking different uh, chemical pathways which are occurring inside our cells. So if you are able to link all these pathways together, you will find in interest in metabolism. Otherwise, this will be really really bad for you and I find difficult or hard time for understanding it but when you understand all these things when you link all those things it will be become very very easy okay now let us uh, discuss gluconeogenesis is the process by which glucose is synthesized from the smaller simpler molecules such as lactate and pyruvate while the catabolic uh, linear pathway of glycolysis deals with the breakdown and the extraction of energy from the glucose the reverse anaerobic process of gluconeogenesis is equally important now another very important part this gluconeogenesis is anaerobic pathway it do not need it does not need the presence of atp the process of gluconeogenesis helps keep blood glucose levels within the critical limits because we need to have a particular limit of glucose inside our blood otherwise it will disrupt many functionalities anyways let us move on now you can see here glucose can be converted into pyruvate via glycolysis and the opposite pathways to generate glucose from pyruvate so glucose is the major energy source for most tissues uh, the brain alone uses more than 100 gluco 100 gram of glucose per day so you can see 100 gram is not very few it's 100 gram means it's huge so brain uh, itself uh, alone uses this 100 gram of glucose per day so all the other cells you can count the how much amount of glucose we need per day to support our life uh, support our chemical pathways to go on and we actually take all those things otherwise we can't survive glucose uh, can also be stored as glycogen for uses for bi of biosynthesis now glucose can be stored to glycogen uh, or starch starch in case of plants and in case of animals glycogen inside the mus um, liver inside uh, liver cells anyways now now we can also see he here from from this glucose another two different pathways to so glucose can produce disaccharides uh, 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 and glycogen is polysaccharides so glucose can also produce disaccharides and it can also give rise to the five uh, carbon sugar via the pentose phosphate pathway and five carbon sugar are important because this ribose five phosphate is a very very important ingredient of nucleotide biosynthesis anyways now uh, under uh, aerobic conditions and when there is a need of the energy and another metabolic intermediate pyruvate can be converted into uh, acetyl CoA now clearly the pathway that synthesize uh, and break down glucose have to be carefully coordinated so that the both are not turned on at the same time because if it is turned on at the same time it will pr it will produce uh, glucose will be break, broken down into uh, pyruvate then again pyruvate is going uh, towards production of the glucose it will be just wastage of energy right so we need to have a tight control over this point that sometimes we need pyruvate uh, that means we need energy in those situations we need pyruvate and then finally uh, take those pyruvate and produce acetyl CoA then produce energy from this uh, citric acid cycle and oxidative phosphorylation or electron transport system but when you don't need that we need to store the glucose only then we go back and utilize energy and invent energy uh, in invest energy and produce glucose from the pyruvate by the gluconeogenesis pathway now how glucose can be synthesized gluconeogenesis occurs primarily in the liver and kidney cells the major inputs come from the breakdown of amino acids from the lactate produced by muscle tissues and transported to the liver by the bloodstream now if you want to see this just uh, go for the video query cycle you can find the link between uh, this uh, liver and the muscle cell okay now refer to the <coughs> okay now you can see here lactate from muscle can uh, can be converted into pyruvate then then finally pyruvate can be produced uh, can be converted into glucose and one of the intermediate is oxaloacetate here now you can also know that oxaloacetate is very very much important in ingredient of ti uh, tca cycle right and this can be produced by the amino acid breakdown so uh, both of them pyruvate and oxaloacetate can be produced uh, by the breakdown of amino acids okay now see it's important to note that the formation of acetyl CoA from pyruvate the formation of acetyl CoA from pyruvate catalyzed by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is not a reversible process the energy required for the reverse reaction is too great that's why this process cannot be accomplished so 
so in the only way is to convert this biodiversity into acetyl CoA is a single direction process it is not a reversible process now we can see the whole picture of our whole overview picture of the production of this uh, glucose from the pyruvate. Now you can see pyruvate uh, uh, and this this uh, pink color pathways are the forward pathway and this is the reverse pathway which is the actual pathway of synthesizing glucose from pyruvate. We can find here that uh, these steps are totally new and unique in gluconeogenesis but there are several different steps are there which are common to gluconeogenesis as uh, they are in case of the glycolysis system okay anyways now let us move on to the energetics of the gluconeogenesis and then we'll discuss all this path pathways in details now <coughs> in energetics uh, we'll talk about the free energy uh, there are big free energy changes associated with only three steps of the pyruvate of the glycolysis production okay now here is the glucose and uh, here is the pyruvate so if we look if we see here the glucose uh, need ATP uh, for the reaction of produ producing glucose 6 phosphate the very first reaction with the help of the en enzyme hexokinase and this reaction is uh, having a del G negative value so it, it can go easy fairly you can see the difference of energy here okay but uh, at the second point uh, if we look at the second step what we are having the fructose 6 phosphate and it, it also needs energy uh, like ATP because uh, after giving this ATP the reaction becomes a highly del G negative and enzyme is phosphofructokinase to produce fructose 1 6 bisphosphate and ATP is hydrolyzed uh, and it is providing the energy for this reaction so we are having again uh, energy gap okay and the third step what we are having in the, in the very third step we are having the phosphoenol pyruvate or PEP and it 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 need it do not needs any ATP but it can produce ATP it can generate ATP and as this phosphoenol pyruvate molecule is very 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 energetic it is much it is having much more energy uh, than uh, ATP itself so uh, it can provide this energy it can provide the phosphate to ADP and it can generate ATP molecule and thus uh, the del G value is negative in this case too and, uh, and the enzyme involved is the pyruvate kinase in this case okay now going uphill from the pyruvate to glucose means having to get around these three big energy barriers we have seen those energies are so those reactions or del G for those reactions are highly electro uh, highly negative so if uh, we need to go to glucose from pyruvate we need to overcome the three, three large energy barriers and for this three uh, large energy barrier overcome we must need the energy or input of energy from outs outside right now let us see about the pathway the seemingly simple process of converting pyruvate to phosphoenol pyruvate involves several steps some in the matrix of mitochondria and other in the cytoplasm we will next examine uh, all of these steps in more detail now you can see uh, uh, in the normal process of production of uh, pyruvate from phosphoenol pyruvate is a one step reaction process because this phosphoenol pyruvate is very very uh, energetic molecule so it just uh, very simply convert into pyruvate it can uh, release energy but for going reverse of this reaction it needs uh, many other enzyme complexes for doing this uh, we need two Im important enzymes one is the enzyme pyruvate carboxylase it will it, uh, act on pyruvate it can drag two carbon uh, carbon atoms from pyruvate and it will produce carbon dioxide and exclude carbon dioxide and thus it is generate it is generating oxaloacetate now oxaloacetate is again carried uh, through this uh, channel of mitochondrial membrane to the cytoplasm and then oxaloacetate is converted into phosphoenol pyruvate inside the cytoplasm with the help of the enzyme called phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase now PEP carboxykinase act on the oxaloacetate to generate PEP okay so this is a two step process okay now the very first step of the gluconeogenesis pathway involves the conversion of the 3 carbon pyruvate to the 4 carbon intermediate oxaloacetate. This energy required step is catalyzed by the pyruvate carboxylase an enzyme that requires biotin as the cofactor if you look at here. Okay. Anyways it will generate uh, this uh, carbon dioxide it will produce this carbon dioxide anyways. 
Now, oxaloacetate cannot get out of the mitochondria directly, but first has to be converted to malate by the some cat malate dehydrogenase used in TCA cycle. Now, these, there lies the very very important step because oxaloacetate uh, in this picture it is seen it is it, it was shown that oxaloacetate is con uh, is just taking out uh, out onto the cytoplasm, but this is not the case at all because uh, inside the mitochondrial membrane there is no transporter for carrying oxaloacetate, so the oxaloacetate must be converted into some other intermediate that can be carry, uh, that can be uptaken to the cytosol and the in, uh, and, and this ingredient is mallet now mallet can be uh, can be transported to, uh, through this mitochondrial membrane via the mallet transporters then mallet will move on to the cytosol and then mallet will reconvert back into uh, oxalo uh, reconvert back into other uh, components and they'll be taken you'll see here okay now once in the cytoplasm the mallet is reconverted to oxaloacetate this time by the cytoplasm from the mallet dehydrogenase now it will convert into mallet now you can see here with the help of the mallet dehydrogenase the mallet is converted into oxaloacetate now then oxaloacetate can be uptaken right but uh, they don't need this oxaloacetate to reuptake on inside the cell because it will convert this oxaloacetate into phosphenol pyruvate now the second unique enzyme of the gl gluconeogenesis phosphenol pyruvate carboxykinase uh, catalyzes the conversion of the oxaloacetate to the phosphenol pyruvate note this is another enzyme e energy requiring process in the very first step we need a one atp molecule for accomplishing this step but in this and then it will produce oxaloacetate now I, i've uh, pronounce something I, I've told something uh, I've told something wrong about this step is that I've told carbon dioxide is generated that's not the case uh, but this pyruvate carboxylase actually adding to carb uh, adding extra carbon to oxaloacetate that's the basic case but now this pyruvate uh, PEP carboxykinase is the enzyme which is just leaving off out this carbon dioxide anyways now uh, the enzyme here is also uh, need in need your uh, needy for the GTP for and the energy of GTP hydrolysis for converting oxaloacetate into phosphenol pyruvate. Okay, now uh, to review the conversion of the pyruvate to phosphenol pyruvate, it requires energy input. In the very first step, it requires ATP, and second step, it requires GTP as the energy source. So two equivalent of ATP energy source are needed. And carboxylation and decarboxylation steps are also there. The very first step is the carboxylation step, which I've uh, told wrong that I've told this is decarboxylation. But the first step is the carboxylation step, and the second step is the decarboxylation step. Okay. Now, gluconeogenesis proceeds by a simple reversal of the steps of glycolysis using the same enzymes up to the fructose 1,6 base phosphate. Okay, so through this, uh, when it is generated phosphenol pyruvate from pyruvate, the first step is very, very much tedious and en energy consuming, but right after that, phosphenol pyruvate is e easily converted into fructose 1,6 base phosphate via the normal glycolysis enzymes, just the reversal of the pathways. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about all these steps. Okay. Now then, when it is uh, produced, it is converted to fructose 1,6 base phosphate. At this point, reversal of the highly energetic phosphofructokinase step of glycolysis is avoided by a simple phosphate cleavage. Now this is the second energy barrier we have talked about. Uh, so we need to go against this energy barrier because the del G for the forward reaction is high, uh, highly highly negative. So we need to go against this step. So we need to input some energy in that case. So how can we do this? Okay, now this can be done via the phosphate cleavage. Now we know we are having the phosphate one six base phosphate. Now we, if we drag one phosphate group out of it, this place with the help of phos uh, fructose one six base phosphatase, so phosphatase enzyme remembers they cleave off phosphate group from other uh, substrates. So again they are cleaving out this phosphate group for fructose one six base phosphate. As a result, this phosphate cleavage gives us the energy uh, which are responsible uh, for dragging this reaction uh, towards this uh, fructose six base phosphate. Okay. Now fructose 6-phosphate is uh, then converted to fructose uh, glucose 6-phosphate by the phosphoglucose isomerase it is also a glycolysis enzyme working in reverse direction. Then all that remains is to remove the 1-phosphate group uh, to generate the glucose. So we have finally produced glucose 6-phosphate. Now what we need to do, we need to cleave up with this phosphate group and we need to generate glucose. If we cleave this phosphate group out, we can easily generate glucose but this step is also uh, the forward step. That means this opposite direction, this from glucose to glucose 6 phosphate. This step is also uh, having the highly del G negative value. So we need to go against that. And how can we establish this? We can establish this by just cleaving out this phosphate with the help of the enzyme 
glucose 6 phosphatase in this case so you, it will act on phosphate uh, glucose 6 phosphate and drag this phosphate out as a result glu uh, glucose 6 phosphate will be converted into glucose okay to overall process of gly gluconeogenesis is energy intensive now two pi derivative molecules are there so what we need we need 4 ATP then 2 GTP then 2 NADH plus 6 H2O then finally we will generate one glucose molecule 4 ADP molecule to GDP molecule these are the all hydrolyzed product of this ATP and GTP things now 6 phosphate uh, inorganic phosphate molecules and 2 NAD now what we are doing what is a good about this process is that we are generating NADs which are very very important uh, because they are acting as electron carriers okay and if we look at the uh, opposite process that is uh, the process of glycolysis we will uh, invest uh, we are investing 2 ADP and 2 inorganic phosphate 2 NAD plus I will produce 2 ATP 2 NADH and 2, 2 plus and 2 pyruvate now this 2 pyruvate can further be converted into uh, for converting to carbon dioxide and water via the TCA cycle it will generate uh, a further round of ATP and NADH molecules okay so these are the net changes actually these are the net changes so net 2 ATP again but in this case net 2 net 4 ADP and 2 GDP so 6 uh, equivalent ATP net loss okay so these are really really uh, this is the difference so we are going towards the catabolic step this is the catabolic one this is the anabolic one the anabolic step requires energy the catabolic step produce energy that is the basic part we can actually uh, illustrate from this picture now if we go on to the control of the gluconeogenesis what will be the steps control of gluconeogenesis occurs at two major point at the pyruvate carboxylase step and at the fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase step now this step pyruvate carboxylase step is tightly regulated by the presence of a factor fructose 2 6 bisphosphate now this fructose 2 6 bisphosphate can be produced inside the cell when uh, there is a high uh, ratio of the signal of the hormone glucagon when the glucagon hormone signals the cell the cell will produce fructose 2 6 bisphosphate now this fructose 2 6 bisphosphate uh, will block the production of fructose 6 phosphate from fructose 1 6 bisphosphate so this is a blockage and the second blockage is the level of acetyl CoA if the concentration of acetyl CoA is there it will activate the production of oxaloacetate from the pyruvate okay because if we are having higher accumulation of, of the of the substrate which is acetyl CoA in this case in those situations they they no longer lead production of acetyl CoA through the TCA cycle or through the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex so it will activate uh, the pyruvate carboxylase enzyme and then then pushing the reaction towards the oxaloacetate from pyruvate okay so these two are the steps now then finally we'll talk about uh, the different interactive animations I'm not going to talk about that because it is so tedious uh, I'll talk this about some other videos but this is all about the gluconeogenesis and I hope it will help you thank you